Today on Ham Radio Q&A, building the off-center fed dipole antenna, this is going to be a fun project, so please stick around for more. KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm planning to build a new antenna for, to use for field day this year, and the design I kind of picked out is the off-center fed dipole antenna. Well, basically, what is an off-center fed dipole antenna? Well, it's... Um, First off, it's a dipole antenna, and as, as we know, dipoles are a total half wave with a quarter wave um, element on each side, and it's fed in the center. Uh, when you feed a dipole antenna in the center, the um, impedance is approximately 70 ohms. But one neat thing about dipole antennas is you can move that feed point anywhere along the, um, the stretch of the antenna, and when you do that, the impedance will change, but at, at the same time, also so uh, you can, uh, depending on where you put that feed point, you can also resonate the antenna on multiple bands. So the trick is to find a spot on the antenna where the feed point is such that it's manageable on more than one band. And um, what the formula is with the off-center fed dipole antenna is that if you, if you put the feed point at about um, the 30% uh, spot. So uh, one end of the, the antenna, or one third of the antenna, is um, is on one side. Then you have the feed point, and then two thirds of the antenna is on the other side of the feed point. Uh, the The formula works out so that you can you, you, the impedances roughly match uh, just about most of the amateur HF bands. Now, depending on the length of the antenna, you know you can cover. You know what will we'll de determine. The number of bands you can cover. So say if you made a dipole antenna for the 40 meter band and um, you move the feed point so it is at the at, so it's at the 30 percent spot so 30 percent on one side and you know 60 percent on the other side or one third two thirds um, then the um, the antenna will resonate on the 40 20 potentially the 15 and then also you know the 10 meter band that's where you get you know your four band antenna um, by by adjusting that feed point so the length of the of the dipole you know will determine the lowest frequency that you'll want to cover uh, the, I'm going to build the antenna for the 80 meter band so I'm going to have an 80 meter dipole antenna I'm going to adjust the feed point so it's at the uh, at the one-third location to make it off-center fed and then since it's an 80 meter antenna it will resonate on the 80 meter band and then also the impedances should match roughly 40, 20, uh, potentially 15, and the um, and the 10 meter band up on top. Um, now I say potentially the 15 meter band, and the reason I say that is that um, one of the things is um, with the um, with the, with the antenna is um, at 21 megahertz or the 15 meter band. Um, the antenna is approximately, uh, for, you know, it's it, it's at, at three wave lengths, and if, is is and, and and the feed bolt and and what happens at that band is that your feed line voltage is at its maximum point, so um, you don't quite get the dip uh, in the impedance that you want for that band. So sometimes it works on on 15 meters, sometimes it doesn't. You know, it all depends on on how you're you're kind of. Um, how, how the antenna is set up and, and how it's interacting with you know the, the rest of its environment. Now the trick is that um, even though the impedance you know we, we, we get a good impedance um, you know typically it's going to be higher than normal uh, you're not going to get a 50 ohm match at that at that one-third point so you're gonna um, well, roughly what happens is the impedance will be up at about 200 ohms so you're going to want to use like a, a four to one ballon in order to drop that impedance down to a manageable level so that you can get a good match and your your antenna tuner can um, give give you that final 50 ohms that you need for the radio. Now I said antenna tuner. Yeah, it's a multi-band antenna and um, usually with multi-band antennas you kind of need a, a tuner of some sort to sort of um, uh, smooth out the extra bits of, of impedance to get that good match for the uh, for the for the transceiver. 
So um, there are some designs that work, you know, that, that give, will give you a good match under two to one in, in most of the bands, but um, a lot of times, you know, you're going to need a tuner of some sort to kind of to kind of even things out to get a good match, especially if you're going to want to use that antenna on the uh, 15 meter band. So uh, moving forward, I uh, got my parts here, and like I said, you know, first off, we're going to need a ballon. Uh, I did not build my own ballon, so I'm kind of I'm kind of cheating there, I guess. Uh, but as um, Ina Garten, uh, you know, would always say, well, you know, if you if you don't have homemade, you, store bought will work just fine. So we got the MFJ 19 or MFJ 913 ballon. This is the current ballon, uh, four to one. So it'll take your 200 ohm impedance, drop it down to 50 ohms at the feed point, and should should give us that that good match for the tuner. Now we're going to need some wire, and I've got I pre-cut two sections of wire. I got one that's approximately uh, 44 and a quarter feet long, and this is going to be my one-third wire. And then I have another section that is you know the two-thirds portion, and this one is 88 and three quarters uh, feet long. I pre-cut you know, pre things so that we can do the final assembly here, um, quick and easy. And then finally, a couple of end insulators. And uh, these are nothing special. I just purchased some electric fence insulators at my um, farm and home store, local farm and home store. You know, they, they work just as, just as well as, as the fancy dog bones, and they're a lot cheaper too. So, a couple of those. So let's put the antenna together and um, we'll get it on the air and make some contacts. So the solder job done, um, I just did a quickie solder on the, to put the, connect the ballon here. I'm using 14 gauge stranded wire. It's, um, works okay for portable use. The one problem with uh, stranded wire is that this stuff is going to stretch as um, it's up in the air. So if you're thinking about an antenna for long term use, you're going to want to use something that doesn't have much stretch to it. Maybe um, uh, copper clad steel, a stranded wire, that's uh, usually a, a Typical product, you know, that's used in um, antennas. So, but for temporary use, this is going to be just fine. Now, this is also insulated wire too. So, one thing to consider with insulated wire is it's going to affect your velocity factor a little bit. So, we may have to trim this down. Uh, typically, the velocity factor is about for for insulated wire is about five percent. So, we may need to shorten this by about five percent of what we expect. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the antenna up first and I'm going to check it with the meter before I start doing any of that shortening and tuning. So I left, um, I left my, my lines uh, intact at their full intended length uh, and then we'll trim for velocity factor after the point. Uh, height, you're going to want to put this up about, at about 30 feet. Now height, with dipole antennas, height does affect the impedance and that's especially true with off-center fed dipoles. So uh, you're, if, you, if you have it too low, your impedance is going to go up. If you have it up higher, then your impedance uh, is going to drop. Um, 30 feet typically for the center point seems to be an adequate number. Um, on the lower bands, the antenna is going to work as an NVIS or near vertical incident skywave antenna. So if you're looking for DX with an antenna like this, you're going to need to get it up higher. And then that's all, all part of the, what you're going to want to do with your adjustments and your tuning also. But for today, um, i got a tree behind me. i got a branch. It looks like it's about 30 feet, so I'm going to try to get a rope up in there. And then i got another tree that looks like it's about 80 feet away, and we got plenty of trees that direction that are about 40-some feet. So it uh, looks like an adequate spot to put this antenna up.
the antenna in the air in sort of an inverted V configuration right now. Uh, let's hook it up to the meter and uh, see what happens. I got the um, trusty rig expert uh, AA600. AA a uh, nice feature about this is it's got a, got a setting called multi-SWR. So I can look at five bands all at once. So I'm going to hit the multi-SWR button and no tuning. I get the, the following readings. I don't know if you can see that on camera there. But basically at 3800 kilohertz, I'm, my SWR is at 2.4 to 1. 7200 is 1.6. 14.2 is uh, 2.0. 21.3, that's the 15 meter band I was talking about. It's 5 to 1, significantly higher, and that was going to be expected. And then at uh, 28.5, the 10 meter band, we're back down to 2.4 to 1. I can do some, maybe some trimming. I bet you that if I trim the antenna a little bit, uh, for considering velocity factor, I'll probably get those numbers down even lower. But um, right now, for this deployment, I'm satisfied that everything is, you know, around that, that 2 to 1. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i be using my external tuner with the radio anyway. So I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to use the tuner to kind of smooth everything out. Um, but, um, you know, just going by the measurements and putting it up in the air with that 4 to 1 balance, she um, came out right the first time. So I'm happy. CQ, CQ, 100 watts in a wire tune-up. CQ, 100 watts in a wire tune-up. KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner. Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for 100 watts in a wire tune-up. VBR, KB9, VBR, this is Kilowatt, Echo Zero, Yankee Whiskey. KE0, Yankee Whiskey. Uh, okay, you're coming in a, a solid 5.8 here into Wisconsin. Whiskey, India. Name here is Michael. You're about 5 by 7 into St. Louis, Missouri. And the name is Gary Juliet Echo Romeo, Romeo Yankee. Yeah, Roger, St. Louis, uh, Missouri. You're coming, like I said, you're coming in like a 5.8, five, 5.9, five, little, you know, modulating up and down a bit. I'm just running barefoot here, 100 watts, with, um, I got an off-center fed dipole antenna sitting in a county park here, so it's sort of in an inverted V configuration, and uh, seems to be running pretty good, getting a lot of, yeah, getting a lot of Midwest contacts here this morning. Back to you. Uh, QSL, KB9, VBR. Very good. You're 5 and 8 into San Diego. Roger, 5 8 San Diego. You're a solid 5 7 here into Wisconsin, Whiskey, India. A uh, beautiful signal this afternoon. All right, thank you for that. Uh, what's the handle? Uh, name here is Michael. Uh, we're, like I said, we're in north central Wisconsin. Roger that, thanks. So the final review on the off-center fed dipole antenna is, well, it's working. It's uh, actually working quite well. Had uh, very good luck on 40 meters with it. Uh, running some of the other bands too, it's, it's, it's working fine. Tunes up, tunes up well. Haven't had any problem uh, getting a tune with the auto tuner. So I'm happy. Like I said, it's just it's just up about center points up about 25 or so feet, and it's in an, in an inverted V configuration. Um, when I go out to field day, I might try to do get it up a little bit higher in sort of a in sort of a flat top. So um, to see if that that affects the um, the uh, the coverage of it a little bit more. But um, it's playing playing very well. Uh, good, uh, be able to get a good strong signal out of it. Uh, reception's quite quite uh, working quite well so oh I'm, I'm very happy that it's um, with it as as an antenna and I think it's gonna work like I said it's gonna work well for me in field day I'm getting excellent signal reports with the antenna uh, most of the stations have been coming back to me with you know anywhere from a 5.7 to a 5.9 so I'm happy there I'll throw up a, a a little chart, you know, a little graph. You can see a map of, of where all the contacts are coming from. It's kind of, I've got it in sort of a north-south orientation, so we, it seems to be favoring the um, east coast uh, a little bit better than it than it is, um, say, the um, uh, the west west side of me. So, uh, 
but it, it also seems to be have a little bit of an envis property or a near, near vertical incident skywave propagation. Picked up a few stations in um, Wisconsin and northern Illinois, strong as can be. So um, it's uh, it's got you know, like I said, you know, but that has a lot to do with the low height that I've I've that the antenna is up in. But it's you know the nice thing about the off-center fed dipole is uh, it's a very forgiving type of antenna. Like I said, you can um, you can have it on a flat top or an inverted V uh, configuration. Uh, if it doesn't fit your um, your property, you can kind of bend the legs to um, or let them droop down. So you've got a lot. You, you can you can work with it to get it to fit and to get and to get it to work. It just uh, um, takes a little bit of adjustment or tuning to um, you know for the for the final output that it's something that you you'd be um, willing to, to to work with. But with that, so good good antenna. Um, Try it, try it for yourself. Maybe it'll be something that'll work well for your, your particular location or needs. But with that, um, if you had any questions about uh, the off-center fed dipole antenna, I'd love to hear them. You can leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll kind of filter through those and we'll keep that conversation rolling. Otherwise, uh, for more articles and information, you can check out my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so you know what you can do for me? You can give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that check out some of the recommended videos and hit that subscribe button. You know, pressing subscribe and the bell notification is your way to be, be informed when a future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.